One of Yahweh's mysteries is the existence of heavenly portals, doors, and gateways leading to and from his heavenly realms. As we move in his dimensions, we experience what's called open heavens. Enoch was introduced to the heaven's gates by Uriel, one of Yahweh's seven archangels, one of the seven spirits of Yahweh is seen in Revelation, when Enoch was transported into the heavenlies by Uriel. Enoch 33 tells us about heaven's gates. Chapter 33 And from thence I went to the ends of the earth, and saw their great beasts, and each differed from the other. And I saw birds also differing in appearance, and beauty and voice the one differing from the other. And to the east of those beasts I saw the ends of the earth whereon the heaven rests, and the portals of the heaven open. And I saw how the stars of heaven come forth, and I counted the portals out of which they proceed, and wrote down all their outlets of each individual star by itself, according to their number and their names, their courses and their position, and their times and their months. As Uriel, the holy angel who is with me, showed, he showed all things to me, and wrote them down for me, also their names he wrote for me, and their laws and their companies. Chapter 34 And from thence I went towards the north to the ends of the earth. And there I saw a great and glorious device at the ends of the whole earth. And here I saw three portals of heaven open in the heaven. Through each of them proceed north winds. When they blow there is cold, hail, frost, snow, dew, and rain, and out of one portal they blow for good, but when they blow through the other two portals, it is with violence and affliction on the earth, and they blow with violence. Chapter 35 And from thence I went towards the west to the ends of the earth, and saw there three portals of the heaven, open such as I had seen in the east, the same number of portals and the same number of outlets. Chapter 36 and from thence I went to the south, to the ends of the earth, and saw there three open portals of the heaven, and thence there came dew, rain, and wind. And from thence I went to the east, to the ends of the heaven, and saw here the three eastern portals of heaven open, and small portals above them. Through each of these small portals pass the stars of heaven, and run their course to the west on the path which is shown to them. And as often as I saw, I blessed always the Lord of glory. And I continued to bless the Lord of glory, who has wrought great and glorious wonders, to show the greatness of his work to the angels, and to spirits and to men, that they might praise his work and all his creation, that they might see the work of his might, and praise the great work of his hands, and bless him forever. Let's study the calculation of electric flux through a circular disc due to a point charge. Say we consider a circular disc which is of a small thickness and say it is of radius r and on its axis at a distance l we have placed a point charge plus q. We know that a point charge originates its electric flux uniformly in all directions. And say here we are required to find the amount of flux from this charge Q which passes through the surface of this disk. So here we can say that uh, if we consider a conical region of which the base coincides with the disk and the vertex with the location of point charge, 
then whichever electric flux or lines which uh, will be originated from the charge within this region will pass through the disc. So, in this situation to calculate the electric flux through the disc, we consider a small element, elemental ring we consider which is of radius x and width dx. And we calculate the flux through this element because electric field due to the charge at various points of the disc is uh, non-uniform. So, here at the location of this element, the electric field will be in radially outward direction and the magnitude of electric field can be written as Kq by this distance square which is root of L square plus X square. So, here electric field will be Kq by L square plus X square and the surface area of this element will be in the direction normal to the disc which is ds which can be written as 2 pi x dx and if the angle between these is theta this will also be theta and we can write down that uh, electric flux through the elemental ring is so, this elemental ring flux is E dot ds or which can be written as E ds cos theta. If we substitute the values, electric field is k q by L square plus x square, ds is 2 pi x dx and the value of cos theta we can substitute from this triangle as L by root of L square plus x square. So, in this situation this plus d phi can be written as uh, here we can also write k as 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught out of which this 2 pi gets cancelled out. So, this will be q l by 2 epsilon naught multiplied by x dx by l square plus x square to power 3 by 2 and now we can find out uh, total flux through this is by integrating this d phi within limits from 0 to r. So, here this q l by 2 epsilon naught is a constant we integrate x dx by l square plus x square to power 3 by 2 from 0 to r which is the standard integration and this can be written as q l by 2 epsilon naught on integrating this expression we will get it minus 1 by root of L square plus X square limits from 0 to R. If we substitute the limits or we can just reverse the limits due to the negative sign present here and if we take this L n the result will be Q by 2 epsilon naught and this will be 1 minus L by root of L square plus R square. This is quite a useful result you can also keep it on tips and in coming sections uh, we will study that uh, by using the concept of solid angle this result can be obtained just in one step that is by uniform distribution of flux in the surrounding of a charge in the overall solid angle. So, we will take it up in the coming section another alternative way to calculate the same result.